So I think I think the RAD projects are going to have that. I know for sure Eddie and Taylor will, because Eddie and Taylor is new construction, and so there's no there's no waiving out of that. So I don't know exactly what our process is, but if the if the person wanted to move, they could probably request a reasonable accommodation through our compliance team and ask to be moved to another building that has a unit um, available. He's, he's very happy to hear. Okay. Well. But I'm concerned because as we're getting uh, more Vietnam vets who are uh, really mangled out of the VA hospital system and into the community, we need to start looking forward into uh, thinking about what we're going to do to house here. Mm -hmm. And as we come down and our, age, our population ages, we have to also look at uh, senior disabilities and handicaps that come along with us. Right. So I think it's important that we start looking at it now and not waiting until it actually happens. Right, I hear you. And then you had a second question was around Hapwa and... Yeah, Hapwa housing. So we're not actively working on any developments with Hapwa funding and I I can't actually tell you why exactly, if it's that there's a limited stream or... Yeah, it's really it's dried up. up. Yeah, I would think that that's why because we tend to kind of take all kinds of subsidy. Um, this, there is, we are still working with Shelter Plus Care, um, which is for people that are homeless with, um, with, I think you have to have two or more abilities. Um, so that, pro that program is still actively funded by HUD and the awards are made through the city's continual care process. And, and TDC is an active participant in that program. So we actually just got 35 new Shelter Plus Care vouchers for Franciscan Towers, so there were 35 there, and then after the fire, they dispersed, and we were able to get a new 35 to place on the tower so that the dispersed people had the option of remaining where they've lived the last four years. They were not forced to come back to keep their subsidy. Thank you. Okay. Do you have another question? Does anyone else have a I question? Know, it's just real briefly. I know this is not a big question, but obviously all these decisions you're making are guided by vision. I'm just curious as to what voices you know inform that vision or and how do you how do you keep that vision fresh? It's a very good question. One of the things I really like about TNDC and that drew me to TNDC is TDC is involved in the communities where it provides housing, and most particularly in the Tenderloin and then also in Soma. So we do provide housing in other locations, but the statements I'm making apply most to the Tenderloin and Soma, where then it, you can call me on these sound, these sound <laughs> cheesy, but, like the, but the investment in the community and the effort to make a difference in the community and the lives of people, particularly with lower income, is is intentionally beyond just housing. And so, um, you know, we, we have a services, you know, we have a services, attendant services group, and we have a, a large group of social workers who operate in the buildings, but then they ha they're supervised by people in the office, and they bring, the, you know, they bring what they, their perspectives and the input that they hear in their meetings with, with people in the buildings to their managers, who then bring them to, you know, we have a strategy group that meets every other week that's represented by not just the senior, the most senior leaders, but people from, you know, people in the property, only a couple people in the properties are there, but there's like mid-level managers, like the director of the social work unit um, is there. And I really think, and also the kind, the, the people that are attracted to work for a place like TDC are generally people that are really interested in more than just the housing are also interested in like broader community issues and like to have impact. So like just speaking for myself, for example, I have a lot of respect and appreciation and admiration for the work that community organizers do. I tried in a small way once when I was in grad school to do some organizing in my neighborhood and I lived in Hollywood in California, in uh, LA at the time. I am not a good organizer. <laughs> I'm a good developer, but I appreciate that I'm in an organization where there are organizers and that I can kind of see and hear their work. You guys probably work with Ryan Thayer, who does a lot of food justice work, and you know, every time he talks to us about what he's doing, I'm really, really inspired. And so I think it's um, through, through the social workers and the um, organizers, I think the fact that we have those people on our staff and they're, they're 
included and like part of our, you know, our our, our corporate thinking around strategy and management. Um, that's probably the way it filters up to someone like me in terms of like what should we be doing in the in the tenderloin and soma. Yes. And Do you mind if I add on to that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh yeah, the you know TNC also does, has been good community organizing all this house to organize all of these tenant councils representing the different neighborhoods. And one of the benefits of doing that is that the councils actually have regular meetings with Liz Orton, the CEO of all, and uh, the presidents have a regular meeting set up when they meet with Liz and Don so that we can have direct conversation directly with the top management of the TNC to kind of share what's going on in the neighborhood and in the community in our perspective back to them directly. And I think that, that really does help guide some of their decisions. And of course, you know, they do have some resident board members. Oh, that's right. Board. Right, I'm glad you reminded me of that. And I, I, you know, I have worked a couple other organizations, and I've never worked for a place that has residents on on the board. Um, so, and I think that that is impactful. You know, in yes. San Francisco, Lord, you gotta have at least one. I know. So I used to work in East Bay in Los Angeles, wow. so somewhere else. But I mean, you, you didn't even have one. <laughs> I don't think so. I'm also at a higher level of management now. I didn't go to very many board meetings before, so I don't want to throw my previous employers under the bus. Don't look at my resume. <laughs> it's the very, law, it's places a low standard, but at least it's a standard. But on the level of like city law, like it requires public meetings, and I know we take that seriously. We kind of think other people may not take it as seriously. Um, but you know, I learn a lot from going to those meetings. I do, and. Um, Yes. And ours are more manly and better ordered than yours. What? Nobody's come in here and done a demonstration. <laughs> so about this here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And we're, and we're better publicly noticed than what you do with the TNDC board meetings. I, I have to say that because you, you can only see the notices inside the building. In our buildings. And that's it. And so people are not, uh, I had asked somebody, when is the next one that we don't know? Right. Uh, those that are not in a TNDC building. And of course, you know, like you pointed out, TNBC is a community leader in the neighborhood, and, and, uh, uh, and like all other nonprofits, since there's a couple hundred of them in down here in this uh, part of the city, they should all be uh, notifying uh, the community when to have their annual board meeting, which is mandatory, and having public access to them because they're making decisions, many of them try to make decisions for this neighborhood and with no neighborhood input, mm -hmm. which is very uh, distressful for particularly the residents because the residents are not are being left out of the decision-making processes and then muted uh, when trying to when you make any decision uh, or, or, or input mm -hmm. uh, in the process. And part of that is also not making it, uh, sometimes what corporations do, they put uh, hurdles, which we've had meetings about, um, and the idea of having public uh, comment, which is they say, well, you got to write down your answer, mm -hmm. uh, submit it to the secretary of the board before it's read or you call. Mm -hmm. Some people don't have the writing skills mm -hmm. uh, or, or you have to submit ahead of time. I mean, things like that. Some sort of hurdles they put in place so that it's, uh, it puts uh, uh, the possibility of maybe somebody actually uh, advocating for their specific needs. Right. Um, I, I wanted to bring up an, an issue since uh, in about a week and a half, uh, General Delivery is moving to uh, 391 Ellis right. Street. And uh, these are for people that do not have addresses. Mm -hmm. uh, you're, you, you know, you deal with people that may have addresses, but there are people that, even though they have addresses, they don't want their mail coming right. to those addresses because for other, for many reasons, actually. And uh, obviously, it's going to be across the street from your 350 or whatever address it was. So, yeah, 350 LS. It's going to be across the street from it. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you see how it was, how uh, general delivery was managed uh, up until now at 101 High. Uh, you, I, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'll leave it like that. But right. the the problem is, it's on the corner of Jones and Ellis, um, and uh, it's going to, you know, if you have any influence over uh, whoever was the owner of the building um, or the post office to uh, uh, make sure not only did they operate the uh, facility, but they actually have some uh, way of uh, making sure it functions. 
for everybody and not becoming another uh, sort of shelter. Uh, because right. that's not the purpose of the government. Uh, government sometimes shelter. Uh, and right now, at me as a box holder, I have to basically lean over somebody to get access to my mail, or I have to walk through a bunch of stuff to get to my mail. And the, the building has been uh, totally, I went on high, has been totally, basically uh, disrespected with graffiti and uh, broken windows and all kinds of things that uh, make you, and not paying rent for it, for, right. for basically something that's, and, and the people have given up on, on securing the building. Or uh, it's still you know, over a thousand box holders, a couple of thousand box holders that are still there. Right. So uh, luckily they'll be moving again in a week and a half. But still, we've had to put up with this for many years, and more recently, but more so uh, now that people know that it's going to be torn down. But they don't have to tear it down themselves. It's going to be torn down by the owner, right. not by the community, which seems like it's more happening. Um, does anybody else have any questions about the uh, nine uh, different uh, developments yeah. that were? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't think you've ever had your predecessor. It's nice of you, Katie. So, yeah. so uh, uh, yeah. your department must be ramping up. This mm -hmm. must be a, a low for you relative to the last few years. Yeah. Is there any thinking about what? when do you get to? I guess there's a point where you get to hand these projects off to property management. Right. Is there any thinking about how big TNDC can become and that there might be some limitations? You know, we are talking about that a lot because we are in a period of tremendous growth. Like, just the Housing Authority properties alone is about 700. It's not like it was a small company to begin with. Right, right. So, yeah, we are, I shouldn't have all these numbers memorized. I think we have around 2,600 units in about 31 buildings, housing about 3,100 people now. And then we have another, probably all in, maybe like at least 1,500 units coming online. Like these three family pro developments are, uh, you know, 250, 350 units, and then the RADs are about 700 units. Um, so maybe it's more like 1,000, but it's, it's a lot. And so we, something I appreciate about TNC management is that, and like I'm talking about the upper management, like Dawn and Liz and Paul and um, now Cynthia, who's overseeing property management, is really wanting to be thoughtful around, oh my gosh, we're getting into this and what does it mean? It means we're gonna hire, need to hire a lot more people. It means we're gonna have to have a lot better systems. It means we're gonna need to have a way to train all these people and orient them to the way that we do business it means that um, we may need to do business in a different way. It also means like, okay, we're bigger, but it's also been important to us to like be grounded. So how do we do both of those things? Um, you know, I think when I'm recruiting people to work for TDC, a couple of things I tell people is, um, I hope I'm not going too far here. I think, I mean, I think one of the questions you raised is, I think there's probably some people within TDC that think it's big enough and we should focus here where we are. Um, I think there's other forces, and I have to confess I'm a developer, <laughs> so I'm a force that wants to keep doing more and feels like we've developed all this capacity and there's so much need throughout the city and there's all this opportunity in other parts of the city. So there's language I learned here that sometimes it's been interesting for me, like. Is this TDC specific language or is this city of San Francisco language? And I think this is actually, I thought it was TDC, but I think it's a city like this, like both and. We want to be both, we both, both want to both like maintain our special relationship and commitment to, to the Tenderloin Soma, but also. How do you compare in size to the other housing providers? Are you all quite a bit larger? Or? So I'm just kind of spitballing right now. Like, we're larger than uh, Community Housing Partnership. I think we're larger than CCDC. We're definitely smaller than Mercy. I mean, Mercy is a national organization that has a very you know specific San Francisco presence. Bridge is much larger um, than we are and, and, and works more broadly. So we're in this kind of weird middle place where we are, you know, we get excited when we're compared to Bridge and Mercy because that tells us, yeah, we're a professional. And you're bigger than Mission Housing. You're bigger than so Mission Housing is actually not small. It's just that they 
haven't been doing new work for the last 10 years. Right. But they actually have, I think, about 2,000 units. Well, I'm just saying there's a lot of not and, and there, right. But there, there, are, there are benefits to the overall community. The other one said, like, that, that, that Tennessee is, is, large, is, is, is as large as it is because that's kind of a bulwark against the, the gentrification. You know, I mean, it's, I mean, for better or for worse, I mean, that, you know, that's, you know, that's one, that's one of the, the few kind of, you know, protections that, advantages that we might have in this fight. And, I, and I'm not a TNDC resident, by the way. I live in a, I live in a little private, you know, I, I live in a little, uh, you know, private SRO, and, and, um, and, and you, you know, I have to say I really appreciate what, what, what people who live in Tennessee Builders have, because it's very difficult for where I live. So you're a for-profit building? Or uh, well, no, I, I just happen to live in an old-style, you know, hotel, you know, building where, you know, you go to the toilet. So it's a for-profit manager. It's owned by Having been around the KDC for a start, um, I remember back then they talked about being the envision of the premier housing provider um, for the community. And for 36 years, I've worked on trying to improve the quality of life. And for 34 of them, the KDC has been around trying to improve the quality of life. And I think that says something right there that uh, um, they're here for the long haul. Yeah. They're not a uh, come on fly here where we'll be here for a week or two weeks and go do something else. They're here for the long haul and they're have some of the most dedicated people uh, and uh, probably some of the most dedicated board members that I've ever seen. I'm uh, very proud of you. Thank you.
sent an email uh, disapproving um, the uh, project for 950 to 975 74 Market Street. There is a new 